welcome to your April 2020 Creativity Tarot Reading. My name is Kaylee Jean and welcome to my channel. I record these readings for artists, entrepreneurs, and anybody who is working on their self-expression or personal growth or spirituality in any way. So if those areas of life are intriguing to you, I encourage you to go ahead and keep listening. Um, I also want to say really quickly that you can use these readings for your sun, moon, or your rising sign, and it's normal if sometimes none of them resonate, especially if it's the beginning of the month. A lot of times what I hear from people is that if you come back at the end of the month and recheck in with the messages, you will find some really interesting correlations. Okay, Aries, let's get into your messages. While I was tuning in for you, I heard... Um, almost like a music kind of coming in to my headspace while I was meditating. And it felt like this is a very personal kind of music in a way, or maybe vibration. Um, and the message that was coming through was actually to like cue the music. And it kind of gave me this feeling like maybe you have a theme song, <laughs> Aries. Um, maybe you have like a song that you would listen to, you know, at a certain period of your life where you were like really um, kicking ass or facing your fears or doing something that was um, maybe challenging, but if you kind of amped yourself up, like the song that would kind of get you amped up, like that's kind of like the message is coming through is like play that freaking song in April because I feel like you are, um, it's like cue up your theme song, like you're ready for like some kind of big exertion. And I think that being in the right headspace, being sort of amped up, being um, excited, and sort of getting yourself, like doing little things that you can do every day, like listening to, you know, an upbeat playlist or something like that, or even, um, you know, getting enough sleep or doing, you know, little ritualistic things that you can do every day to kind of get you supported in terms of your energy. Because I get the sense that some of you are kind of being either pushed into or you're like actively um, engaging in the role of being a leader somehow. And this could be even like within your household, you might be the person who is you know, not freaking out <laughs> with everything that's going on. You might be the person that is sort of managing like practical things while there might be other people um, it, around you who are incapable of doing that, either, you know, for health reasons or because of their age or because of, you know, any number of things. Maybe their emotional experience of this month is a little bit more difficult than yours. And so I feel like there's this sense of you really kind of stepping up in a lot of ways and taking more of a leadership role and um i think that it's like strange to say but i almost feel like this is like your time to shine aries and for those of you aries sun signs who have your birthday coming up in april i uh, just want to say happy birthday to you those of you who already had it hope it was awesome hope all your birthday um, dreams and wishes come true um, but this really is your time. Like, this is your time to, like, kind of be on a roll. And it sounds funny to say that when there is so much going on in the world that can bring a lot of stress and uncertainty. But I feel like you actually are kind of a beacon of strength in all of this. And I think that the people whose lives that you're involved with or whose lives that you touch, whether you are, you know, the head of a household, like I said, or you're involved in, um, like, a career situation, maybe you're, like, a manager or... Even if you're somebody who has a YouTube channel or a social media platform and you're influencing people in that way, I just see your influence being really kind of powerful right now, Aries, and I feel like you can make a lot of um, positive difference for people in whatever capacity you find yourself in. So definitely value that and get yourself amped up to be able to bring the energy that you specifically want to bring to each individual situation in your life. Life. Um, because you're going to be very effective at doing that. Whatever it is, you're going to be succeeding at it. So be very intentional and also feed your spirit. Make sure that you're doing things that uplift you, that get you excited, that get you feeling passionate and get you in that mindset of not second guessing yourself or second guessing life, but really kind of being fully in your sense of alignment and your sense of like, okay, this is what I'm focusing on. 
I also got the message that things are going to be coming to you in interesting ways, like mysterious ways <laughs> at this time, Aries. So that's kind of an unusual message. Um, I'm not sure if this has to do with like new opportunities for you or maybe a significant change in your life path. Um, but I feel like things are happening and coming together for you in mysterious ways right now. So it's important to kind of embrace that and recognize that like whatever you're seeking in life is actually also kind of seeking you like the Rumi, um, what Rumi said about like what you want also wants you. Things are coming to you in mysterious ways. And so just trust in that as well, Aries. So let's take a look at your cards and we'll get some more insight. Okay. And we're also going to be getting um, some messages from your animal spirit oracle cards as always. And we've got, I'm gonna get you a Bob Ross message because these um, were so heartwarming and it just, this deck has such a beautiful shen, it has such beautiful spirit to it. Aries, okay. So let's take a look at your Animal Spirit Oracle cards. We've got the frog and the hawk. Interesting, so a couple of things coming through um, with these cards. First of all, with the frog being your path, I think that um, there's a lot going on for you, Aries. There's a lot of things going on personally for you. There's a lot of things going on in the world. There's just a lot going on in general. And so when we see the frog as your path, um, this is a watery card. It's a card that has sort of like a visual um, darkness to it. And I think that this really is saying that you need to take some time for yourself in April. I think that there's a sense of really needing to kind of rejuvenate and rest and come back to your energy, maybe even getting some alone time, which shouldn't be too difficult given that, you know, for many people, um, they're staying at home, kind of doing things that are a little bit more hermit-like. And I think that this is going to actually be really in alignment with your energy. So there is going to be a lot that you're accomplishing and that you're doing, Aries. But I also think that it's important that you counterbalance that with genuine time for rest and never once in April beat yourself up if you feel like drained and you just need to take a nap or take a break. Like I think that that is something that's absolutely essential and don't hold yourself to any like unrealistic expectations about, oh, I should be able to go, go, go five days a week and take a break on weekends or whatever. Um, this is about really acknowledging that you are going through an emotional cleansing, a physical cleansing, and collectively as a species, we are going through um, a, a very heavy emotional experience as well as a physical experience, like changes in our economy and all of that. So just recognizing that you need a break you definitely need to rest. Um, and part of the reason that I also say that you need to rest is because the hawk is coming through as the influence for you in April. And the hawk is a card of, um, above all things, like spirit messages. So I feel like your life is kind of showing you a new direction that's coming forward. And if you're like, constant, if you're not giving yourself a break at all to meditate, if you're not quieting your mind, if you're not resting enough, then this experience may, some of the significance of it may be lost on you. So the hot card is saying like, new energy is coming into your life. Again, it very much matches up with the meditation message of like, um, things coming to you in mysterious ways. Like that's very, very, very much the hawk energy is Things are being connected for you at the higher level that you may not completely be aware of at, as they're coming together, but they are. And there is this thing that I want to say to you, which is like that everything is going to make sense. 
Aries, everything is going to make sense. So definitely um, a lot of powerful energy. And I feel like the spiritual message here is like, relax. Things are happening for you for a reason. Um, and trust that and make sure that you're getting enough rest. So you've got Knight of Wands and Ten of Wands. Eight of Swords and the Three of Cups in the second week. Two of Cups in the Chariot. Nine of Wands and the Ace of Swords at the end of April. So um, I look at this as kind of like a loose narrative of the month. And let's look at your Bob Ross message. <laughs> okay, so we have from Bob Ross, whatever makes you happy, you put it in your world. And I love the depiction on this card. It has like a wintry kind of isolated feel. And this is, you know, probably a good metaphor for how um, many of us feel, you know, with social distancing or with, you know, not being as social as we normally would in our daily lives. Um, this is an opportunity for you, Aries, to kind of step back and say, like, what do I want to put in my world? Um, what is it that I really want to see in my world? And how can I kind of take those steps to put that there? I think that this is a really good opportunity for you to gain some clarity, which we see you achieving by the end of April, by the way, with the Ace of Swords. So everything is going to land more or less in a very clear place. And I do see some joy along the way as well. So let's take a look at the first week of April. So we've got Knight of Wands and Ten of Wands. Um, interesting that you have these like higher wands cards which makes me kind of feel like some of you are potentially um, potentially like ending a work relationship or you could be um, finishing a project or there's like a sense of like that kind of last push to either gain clarity or to sum up or complete something. Um, which is interesting in the beginning of the month because you have the Knight of, of Wands and you have the Ten of Wands. So some of you, because the Knight of Wands, um, as it came up, which is, yeah, as it came up, the Knight of Wands is riding in the opposite direction of the Ten of Wands. So there could be a tendency for some of you in the first week of April to um, either like not want to look at something uh, that you maybe need to pay attention to, which could be burnout. Um, or it could be that you are like giving yourself that final push to kind of finish something or complete something that really is draining you or that feels heavy on you. And it's like time to release it, time to let it go, time to finish up. So it's like this like kind of impulsive like push to kind of finish something or for some of you, the alternative could be that you're really trying not to face something because you feel an immense sense of pressure and personal responsibility to keep going, but there really is a big issue that you need to look at um, in order to kind of reinstate balance again. But I do see you getting balanced again um, because by the third week, you know, you've got cards that indicate integration and balance. So this is like a temporary state of discomfort in the first week of April that we're seeing. By the second week, which is interesting, um, at that point, we're going to have the full moon in Libra on April 8th. So right at the beginning of the second week, we have the eight of swords and the um, three of cups, which is actually like a kind of, if we were to look at this card and zoom out in the framework of current events, this does look like a pair that suggests um, social distancing because we have this person kind of who's limiting themselves in their life, like they're kind of tied up, they're apart from these people. So there could be, um, there could have been maybe something that you're like planning on doing around the full moon that is no longer viable. Um, maybe as a result of, you know, uh, what's going on economically and socially right now. It could also be that um, there's like a, a sense of coming together after a period of isolation. That could also be very much a way that we could look at these cards um, because as they came up, the um, Eight of Swords is preceding the Three of Cups. So it's kind of like this... Um, there's a theme of socialization. There's a theme of like 
are we getting together or are we not kind of thing. Um, and I don't mean that necessarily romantically, but it, it could be for some of you, I guess. But it's like, there's something changing around the second week of April. And it could be, you know, with that full moon um, in Libra, which is your seventh house symbolically. So that is definitely potentially leaning towards um, the idea of give and take in your life and the idea of partnerships and kind of like how you balance yourself and how you balance your energy. Um, so those are going to be major themes. And I think that whatever you choose to do at that time, um, just being very intentional about it and being aware of like the energy that you're putting out, the risks you're taking and what you're willing to sacrifice in order to maybe have good relationships with other people. But just being really clear on your decision making process is going to be very fruitful for you. I'm actually leaning towards, you know, that full moon kind of culminating in some improvement in your life in terms of your relationships. For some of you, it could be romantic. You could be meeting someone. Um, it could also be like business partnership energy as well, since my readings tend to focus more on creativity and business. Um, but by the third week of April, you've got the Two of Cups and the Chariot. So this is, um, at, no matter what way you slice it, this is the balancing of energies because the two of cups represents the alchemy of, you know, two different people coming together, which can also symbolize two different energies coming together and sort of like how they mix. Um, and also the chariot represents, you know, we, we see, um, and this is also based, you know, in my opinion, on a much earlier image from Plato, um, describing the mind as a charioteer, you know, drawn by two different colored horses. And it's sort of like the mind and the passions um, getting in alignment or like the, the mind's ability to kind of fuse and to gain um, influence or control over like the the passions and the spirit and you know the the rational interest of the individual. So no matter what way we slice it, we have two images of integration here. We have two images of gaining um, some kind of harmony that's happening. So by the third week of April, I really do feel like something harmonious is going on for you where you're feeling more in the driver's seat you're feeling more comfortable this is kind of maybe like theme song energy as well like what was coming through in the meditation um about you know like queuing up the music for your theme song feeling very powerful you could be leading um you could be like in a leadership role by the third week of april in some way or you could just be making more meaningful connections that support like the direction that you want to take your life in so i do see positive energy around like socializing and relationships potentially um in the third week of april could be improvements in your um, personal relationships or your personal life as well so that looks really really good by the last week of april we've got the ace of swords and the nine of wands um and so I, what i'm seeing is that there's like this kind of tendency or this um sensation within you of like I don't want to say it's not guardedness, but it's like, I'm going to be really persistent. It's like a determination kind of thing that I see with the, the nine of wands and it's next to the ace of swords. So it's like being determined as you kind of step back into the river of life in some way, being determined that you're going to keep the clarity that you've worked so hard for like something very strengthening happens for you around the third week of april and then it's like okay now i'm here time to go like actually walk this new talk or it's time to actually start this new journey um and so i see you kind of being cautious and determined to maintain your sense of clarity and your sense of like awareness of what you really want and and clarity about your purpose. So one tip that I want to share for you um, is something that I do in my personal practice. I remind myself every single day of my personal mission statement with my work. And it's just one sentence long, but it's something that I repeat to myself all of the time that really helps me to remember like why I do the work that I do and what is useful about it or what is like motivating to me about it. Um, and so that's a very personal thing, but you can definitely come up with your own personal mission statement, like just even one sentence that describes kind of 
what you are here to do at this time in your life. And that could change over time, but it becomes almost like a personal mantra. Um, and I think that that would be really useful for you because I see you kind of really motivated about the future at the end of the month. But I also think you're going to be kind of looking at the future and being like, how can I maintain this clarity? How can I maintain this connection with my mission? Um, so that could be really great, you know, for, for you to just have an example of, you know, another person who uses something like a personal mission statement to stay committed. Um, my personal mission statement is that I'm here to relieve unnecessary suffering. Um, and so like that's broad enough that I can use it in a lot of different areas of my life, but it's simple enough and true enough and, and resonates in the core of me that I can use it every day and it still gives me that chill of like, oh yeah, that's that's what I'm here to do. So you could come up with something like that for yourself and then that will really help you stay in alignment. But you know, the, the ultimate like question I think for you in April Aries is like, what do you want to see in your life? Like you're going to have some opportunity, maybe we all do, in this period of like temporary isolation from the world and from our usual routine where we can really ask ourselves, what do we want to see? What, what do we want to put into our world? So um, that's a really beautiful message. I hope this reading has been helpful for you, Aries. Thank you so much for being here on my channel. Please let me know in the comments below if you got something useful from this reading. I would absolutely love to hear from you. And um, if you enjoyed this reading, also please give this video a thumbs up and share it with an Aries who you think could benefit. Um, all of those things are really helpful to my channel and it really helps me to know that these readings are helpful to you. So thank you so much. I will talk to you in the next one, Aries. Be safe and have an amazing month. Bye.